Hello everyone and welcome to another Double Sleeve Review, where today we're going to be looking at the Vault X Exotech Zip Binder. It's a very pretty way to store your cards, but is it more form over function, or is this what you should be putting your cards in? Stay tuned and find out. And if you enjoy these videos and all these reviews that we do for all of you guys, then drop the video a like and why not subscribe and you'll see when the next video is coming out. Um, we're going to be doing some fairly new product reviews as well. We've managed to get our hands on a couple of different sleeves and boxes and things like that, so stay tuned for those exciting reviews. So when we do our binder reviews, we like to look at a bunch of different categories, but we'll start things off with the build quality and materials. So for this binder, it's probably one of the standout elements is what it's made of. The Exotex material on the outside is a kind of rubbery um, diamond stamped material with this lovely stitching uh, that has a cardboard backing with some a soft-ish foam uh, on the outside with a lovely microfiber inside and um, it's all sealed up with this nice zip uh, depending on what you get you can either get one that matches the outside or the one we've got here which is a kind of contrasty one which is special for uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield pen um, and then the inside you have some fairly standard looking uh, black plastic with the clear pockets attached. Um, this is the nine pocket variant, although there are um, some uh, four pockets and some 12 pockets as well. Um, by and large, they're all going to be similar in terms of the way we review them. However, there will be some differences naturally in the size and obviously the price when we get to that. Um, but overall, it's okay. The only thing we did notice fairly early on, which we'll come to when it comes to card fit, is that the binder pages, the pockets, seem to be um, quite um, differing in size. Uh, it's slight if you're not looking for it, I guess, but um, when we're looking at everything and we've seen many a binder now, um, it's quite noticeable when you're putting sleeved cards inside. But we'll get onto it in card fit. All I would say is it feels like they're probably not the most premium of pages, which is a bit of a shame. So how well do cards fit inside? Well, what we do is we sleeve up a bunch of single sleeve cards and we pop those inside the binder. We completely fill it and it's with a bunch of different manufacturers. We don't just stick with one or two because they're all varying different sizes and thicknesses. And we notice to see how many of them kind of catch or, or give us an awkward um, fit in general. And some of these pockets are oversized and some are undersized. The difference can be as much as five mil, which sounds small, but when you're talking about a binder that's got sort of three cards in it, it high, um, it is uh, surprising and a little bit frustrating. Overall, it makes the binder slightly too loose rather than slightly too tight, um, which is a bit of a pain. Um, however, it's not the worst thing ever. It's just some binders that are similar from other manufacturers get this spot on and every pocket is exactly the same size all the way through the binder. Whereas with this, it varies wildly, which is rather strange. How bendable is the binder? We like to look at this because naturally your binder is holding a load of cardboard, which is very fragile and something that will bend obviously very easily. We want to make sure that if you put your cards inside and they're worth a little bit of money or they're just very precious to you, that someone's not going to accidentally crush, bend, break your binder in such a way that your cards are damaged inside. Simply what we do is grab the sides and give it a good bend and basically work out how rigid or flexible it is. Um, overall, it is cardboard based. You get two layers, front and back, if it's sealed. It's okay. It's not as rigid as some of the other cardboard back um, binders. However, it is way better than any of the basic kind of plasticky covered uh, binders that you can get. So it's good. I will say that much, it's good. Um, we do also do a little drop test, which is kind of useful for a couple of reasons. Um, but we, we fill the binder completely full of single sleeve cards, and then we drop it from waist height, so not particularly high, as if you were carrying it, onto each of the corners to see if that makes a difference. Um, and you do notice a little bit of corner bend on the exterior corners. Um, 
but not as significant as some other cardboard. So it's clearly not quite as thick, but it's maybe a little bit tougher. So interesting, um, and let's say largely good. So now we look at durability, and we do a couple of things for this. Um, this is mainly to look at how well the binder will protect your cards again, but also, especially with a nice looking binder like this one, um, will it stay looking nice if it's a bit of rough and tumble if you're carrying it around with you all the time? So what we do to start with is we get um, a couple of different scratch tests. The first one is just with a fingernail, um, just to simulate, you know, you're scratching it, you're moving it, you're opening it, different people handling it quite possibly. Um, and not a great deal of um, problems with this, a little bit, but not too much. Um, you tend to see in the same spot that it will discolor a little bit, but, but realistically, not a huge amount. The next thing we do is the same thing, but with a ring, just with something a little bit uh, more robust and possibly a little bit sharper. Um, again, you can see a bit of wear, but it's not significant enough to cause you a problem. And over time, it will be hard to tell. Uh, the last scratch we do is with a pen, uh, just without the nib, uh, the ink nib. So it's just the kind of like basic end of a pen. Unfortunately with this, it is very quick and it is very bad. We get a very significant line, as you can see here, um, that completely marks uh, permanently the binder. And what you can see is basically the rubber outside that is lovely and, and feels nice and looks great um, is, is quite literally just being torn off and you are permanently damaging it completely. There's no buffing this out or, or filling this in. This is completely um, broken from now on. So um, one to be aware of, any kind of deep scratching or marking will certainly cause you a problem in the long term. The next thing we do though is we do what's drop test. Um, and we do two of these things. I've already mentioned dropping it on its corners, um, which is useful. And as I said, there was a little bit, but not too bad on the exterior corners. On the interior corners, basically where the spine is, you can't see any real wear or tear at all. I think that it's very, very well made. I think the material being um, rubbery means that um, you can't see creasing the same as you can with something that would be maybe smoother. Um, so good job in that. The other thing we do is we fill the binder full of cards, we lay it on the floor, and then we drop a satin tower deck box from waist height, corner first onto the binder. It is uh, painful if you like the binder, um, but we do it three times, and each time you do get a corner-shaped mark. It's an empty satin tower, so it's not particularly heavy, but it's kind of something vaguely um, simulating someone dropping something at a game night, basically. Uh, from your LGS and it does make some dents. However, the material being rubbery and also being kind of this strange stamp diamond pattern, it almost is an optical illusion where you can't quite see the dents unless you're looking at a certain angle and it catches the light. So it's actually done better on the denting than I was expecting. Um, just a real shame about the scratch. Um, I don't know how they avoid it. I think a harder material, um, would not scratch quite so badly, but would be less tactile and would have uh, less of a nice sort of matte finish to it. So um, it's a trade-off that you get for having something with this Exotech fiber, uh, Exotech outer. So how secure is the binder? Well, what we do, we fill it full of cards, single sleeve, we zip it up, we whack it in a rucksack and we shake it and we turn it and we shake it and we turn it all four directions and then we open it and we see what's happened. We do this full but we also do it half full and that is intentionally to see if the pressure of all the pages together is causing them to stick in place and if you only had a quarter or half a binder full of cards would that make a difference? It does for some binders but not for this one. Um, so even though we mentioned that the, the loose fit of the sleeves actually none of them moved around it was okay and i mean when you've got a zip it's your last line of defense anyway if something did fall out of a pocket it's not going to fall out into your bag it's going to remain in that flat space so anything with a zip tends to do pretty well anyway um, i think the zip just also keeps it tight enough so that nothing does squeeze out so yeah really well done on this one great 10 out of 10. and now we look at the clarity and very simply, if you're going to get a binder like this, you're probably going to be putting your 
special cards inside, whether it's collecting a whole um, set or you're just using it as a trade binder, you're going to want your cards to look good. You might want to show off the people. So you want to make sure that the pages are uh, clear and make your cards look good. So we get a foil, we pop it inside and we see um, half and half, whether or not you can tell the difference. Um, overall, the binder pages are great, as you would expect. Everything looks fine. There's no clouding, there's no strange refraction, um, nothing odd at all. Looks good. Good job. So now we look at price and on Vault X's website, uh, the nine pocket is $21.99, the four pocket is $14.99 and the 12 pocket is $26.99. We only sell a few different colors at the moment on our website in the nine pocket and we sell them at $19.95. Just think that's a better, more fair price for what other companies are charging for similar binders. Um, but make your own choice. We only ship to the UK and by all means, shop where you want to shop and pay what you want to pay. But that's the kind of price you should be looking for for a binder like this. So there you go. The Vault X Exotech Zip Binder. Um, as I said, this one's the kind of special um, Pokemon one for Sword and Shield 10. Um, they do a bunch of different colors. The decision as to whether or not this is right for you, in my opinion, comes down to do you like the style? Do you like the look, the feel? Um, if you're bought into what vault are doing aesthetically, it's going to be hard to beat that anywhere else. The actual binder is fine. It's a good binder. Um, very few complaints. And what complaints we do have are fairly picky or quite extreme. And so unless you're someone who's going to be using this binder very regularly, taking cards in and out, transporting it a lot, chucking it in the back of a boot, throwing it in your bag with all your hard metal objects, dice, etc., um, and you are worried that it's going to look bad, then, all right, maybe there's a different option for you out there somewhere. But uh, for most people, you're buying into it because you like the style. The only thing that's a bit of a shame, and I'm sure vault will sort this over time, is that they don't have a great range of accessories. So if you're someone who's looking for um, a binder that matches a playmat and a deck box and some sleeves, we're not quite there yet. We're getting there, and it seems like vault are definitely doing a good job with it. But there are other brands who we've reviewed before. Um, pretty much all the other brands have a variety of different accessories. So if you're somebody who likes to mix it up and, and have different types, great. But if you're somebody who likes to have all the same thing, um, might be tricky. The last thing to mention with vault is they do a market-leading 12-month warranty on all their products, which is a great thing. Something we want to see all accessory manufacturers doing and should give you a bit of peace of mind if something does break um, out of the ordinary, the zip snaps off or something, um, that they would um, look into trying to sort that out for you. So that's great. And that should, that should factor into your purchasing decision. Um, overall, what do you think of this binder? Um, vault have become quite popular, certainly in more recent years. Do you have one? Have you looked at it and thought, oh, I don't know, is it worth the risk? Have we swayed you one way or the other? If you're unsure, there are other binders out there to look at, other reviews, I'll post them here. Um, but yeah, it's a good one. So let us know in the comments below uh, what you think of this review and what other things we should be reviewing. Stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed so you get to see um, what the next things are. Like I said, there's a few interesting reviews we've got coming up. Um, and um, check out our UK TCG site if you want to pick up a binder like this or any other accessories or TCG products. Um, we really appreciate the support this whole time. Have a fantastic rest of your day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.